welcome to the Blindfold Chess Podcast. This week, we are looking at the four-time Women's World Chess Champion and the second highest rated female player of all time, Ho Yi Fan. A chess prodigy from a very young age, after she started playing, she beat her father in a couple of weeks, and they recruited international master Tong Yong Min as a coach for her when she was five years old. At the age of 13, she became the Chinese women's champion. She earned the grandmaster title at the age of 14 years, six months, and two days, which is an accomplishment in of itself since there are only 39 women in the world to do so. And at the age of 16, she became the women's world champion. She has been regarded as being leaps and bounds ahead of her competition, winning her four world champions with a score of 10 wins, zero losses, and 14 draws. And she has been the women's world number one player since September of 2015, being more than 50 points ahead of second place. In 2018, she semi-retired from chess to focus on her studies. She became a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford, and later she became the youngest full professor at Shenzhen University at the age of 26. Even being so far advanced in the field of chess, she only treats it as a hobby and not as a career. In 2018, she stated, I want to be the best, but I also want to have a life. In this week's game, we are looking at a game from 2017 at the Gibraltar Masters. Now, if we're ready, let's begin. Ho Yifan versus Babu Lalith. One, pawn to g4. Pawn to d5. Two, pawn to f3. Pawn to e5. Three, pawn to d3. Queen h4 check. Four, king d2. Pawn to h5. Five, pawn to h3. Pawn h captures g4. White resigns. Yes, she did resign on move 5. Yes, this is a real rated tournament game. So why would the reigning world champion do this? It is the same reason that Bobby Fischer didn't play in 1972. And it's the same reason Magnus Carlsen recently resigned on move two against Hans Niemann to make a statement. At the time, she was playing in a co-ed tournament, otherwise known as an open tournament, but she was upset with her pairings. In the United States, 85% of the chess players are male, while 15% are female, and FIDE reports theirs to be around 10 to 11% being female. Generally, there are open tournaments with both men and women, and then there are also women-only tournaments. This tournament was an open tournament, one of the strongest that's ever existed, and Ho Yifan was paired against women in seven of her nine rounds. There were 255 players there, and men outnumbered the women four to one. With such a large skill gap between Ho Yifan and the second place women's champion, she was looking for stronger competition with this tournament, and each round of pairings, she was growing more and more upset. And this only stirred the pot of the long history of controversy in the game between the genders. From this example of lopsided pairings, to the representation disparity, to hijab wearing requirements based on the country of play, the debate around women's titles, which are lower than the quote-unquote regular titles or normal titles, and the general sexism that women experience both over the board and online and just in comment threads. We as a society need to do better in finding solutions to these issues. 
there are currently strides taking place to increase the number of women's clubs and women's tournaments in trying to pique the interest earlier in their chess career so that way they continue to play deeper into their career. Yifan is a brilliant player and she deserves all the credit and then some that she has earned. So here we are going to look at a game where she can show off that skill in 2014, the same year that she won her Grandmaster title. Ho Yifan versus Marcel Efremsky, 2014. One pawn to c4. Pawn to e5. Two pawn to g3. Knight f6. Three bishop g2. Pawn to d5. Four pawn c captures d5. Knight captures d5. Five knight c3. Knight b6. Six knight f3. Knight c6. Seven rook b1. Rook b1 is a bit of a peculiar move. What is the idea behind it? The idea is for white to push the b2 pawn up to b4 to try to dislodge the knight from c6. Pawn to a5. Pawn to a5 stops white's idea from playing b4. However, by playing a5, black has severely weakened the b5 and b6 squares. We will soon see how Yifan exploits that. Eight pawn to d3. Bishop e7. Nine castle kingside. Bishop e6. Ten bishop e3. Castle kingside. Eleven rook c1. Knight d5. Twelve knight captures d5. Bishop captures d5. Thirteen, queen a4. By putting the queen on a4, white is not only leveraging the weakened square of b5, but they are also putting substantial amounts of pressure on the black's queen side due to the weak b7 pawn, a5 pawn, the semi-weak knight on c6, and potentially the bishop on d5. That is quite an oppressive list for only moving one pawn. Rook b8. Fourteen, queen b5. Rook e8. Fifteen, 
Knight captures e5. Bishop captures a2. Sixteen, knight captures c6. Pawn b captures c6. Once the dust had settled on the queen side, we can see that black's pawn structure is shattered. We have the weakened a5 pawn, the weak c6 pawn, which is doubled to the c7 pawn. Seventeen, queen captures a5. Rook captures b2. Eighteen, bishop captures c6. Bishop b4. Nineteen, Queen a7. Rook f8. 20. Bishop f3. Bishop d5. was a horrific blunder for black. Can you spot the tactic for white? 21, queen d4. Black resigns. Already up a pawn, by playing queen to d4, white is threatening both the bishop on d5 and the rook on b2. That amount of material is a bit too much to climb over going against the soon-to-be world champion. That is all that we have for this week. Tune in next time as we continue to look at the games of the Masters and work on our blindfold ability. And please, be kind to one another. We're all on the same earth together. <laughs>